we see God operating as Rafa. We see God operating as Sikenu. We see God operating as Sabaoth. Right? We also see him in redemption operating as both the lion and the lamb. So it's not unusual for God to be multifaceted in his operation. And he created man in that image. And so for any man to really know that he's prepared and ready for marriage, graduation is not enough reason for you to think you are prepared for marriage. Advancement in age is not enough reason for you to think you are prepared in marriage. Now all the brothers look up and sisters also look up. There are three dimensions in every man. Let's call the first dimension the husband. Call the second dimension the father. And call the, the third dimension the spiritual head. Is that alright? The dimension of a man as a husband defines the scope of his ministry to his wife. It's important for every man to understand that scripturally you have a ministry that is exclusive to your wife. And if you have not trained yourself to be able to carry out that ministry to your wife effectively, you will never be able to get married and you will never enjoy your marriage. The dimension of a man as a husband defines everything, uh, uh, his intimacy with his wife defines meeting her emotional needs, defines meeting her psychological needs. All of that together defines the role of that man as a husband watch this the danger with this is that many in our society are not husbands they may be fathers they may be men of god and i preach this with a bias to those in ministry many pastors are poor husbands many leaders are poor husbands because we are busy trying to fend for the family we are busy trying to do ministry and do this and that and we forget that there is an exclusive role ordained by god that a man should play to his wife how many of our mothers are starved of the love of the attention the togetherness the emotional satisfaction that should come on account of complete marriage there are many pastors, many businessmen, many church leaders, many entrepreneurs, many public figures and celebrities who are starving their wives of this dimension. Every brother here, I want you to know that if you are preparing for marriage, you are also preparing to be a husband. All the brothers say husband. Yes, you must. You are not a husband when a wife comes to you. You are a husband when you are preparing to meet that need don't wait for marriage to make you a husband you are first a husband before marriage at the point where you are aware of the demands this dimension trains you to understand who a woman is women are fragile women are emotional people the bible says to dwell with them according to knowledge one of the greatest ministry of a man at this point is to be able to give his wife what i call emotional security watch this when a man begins to compare the lady he's going out with or his wife with another lady your la the lady you are going out with is standing there and you turn and look at another lady and say my goodness what in the world is this what am i looking at what you are simply telling your lady is you are short of a standard and you begin to mount pressure on that lady every lady wants to come to the man god has given her and feel secure it is not a news again that both male and female we all have assets and liabilities there is nobody including myself who is free of assets and liabilities there are weaknesses there are strengths there's nothing embarrassing about it are you getting the point now so a husband is one who has understood this dimension and will protect his wife emotionally will protect the lady they are going out with emotionally because he understands that her love for me is a response to the confidence that i give her how many ladies get angry the moment they begin to see another lady coming around their man they are angry they are resentful they begin to feel insecure because they feel this sister is obviously finer than me this sister is obviously this and that than me 
and because she knows that the man has not created a track record of celebrating her the way she is she begins to feel insecure that's what has brought jealousy that's what has brought presumption between ladies same thing for guys so brothers if you want to be you want to go into marriage you must realize that you have a responsibility to your wife to protect her emotionally protect her emotionally women are very vulnerable the prettiest of all ladies will still need reconfirmations forget all that shout ladies shout no i don't need anything it's a lie they were designed to work on confirmations reaffirmations how many people are in relationships and never for once he does not make seeing the lady look like a big deal he looks like look you are easily replaceable at that point listen brothers if you ever carry any man's daughter and give her an impression she's easily replaceable you are not being sincere to her if you don't love her or you think she's not fine enough leave her alone god will bring somebody who loves her and will passionately follow her i hate seeing ladies chasing after guys helplessly i said hey, hey if i shout he will leave me oh brother don't leave me don't leave me if you leave, where will i go to and the guy is happy he's taking advantage of their vulnerability brothers it must change in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us tonight how many of our fathers how many of us have seen our parents father and mother just take out time from their busy schedule to sit together and talk when was the last time you ever saw your father and your mother thinking of not restaurant in the home there just sitting down to eat and talk if they are together they are quarreling he's rebuking her he's lost the dimension of a husband many people think the dimension of a husband is only the pre-children dimension so it's the dimension that a man shows a woman until the arrival of children from the time the woman gets pregnant the man feels I've, I've graduated from being a husband from now henceforth my work is to be father is that not true and a spiritual head and so they rob the wife of that emotional dimension number two you are preparing for marriage it means you are preparing to be a father look up let me tell you something you are not a father when you have children the word father is the greek word abba right the bible says he's given his spirit whereby we cry abba father 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 the word abba means source and sustainer not the one who reproduces children necessarily you are a father when you are the originator of a thing and you are the sustainer speaking in the context of marriage you only become a father when you are a provider and protector write it down fatherhood has nothing to do necessarily with giving birth to children this is where a lot of people get it wrong the moment they have a bouncing baby boy or a bouncing baby girl or some children they convince themselves that they are fathers no sir in the bible the bible's view of fatherhood listen the bible's view of fatherhood is not just reproduction alone is the ability to provide and protect Here's what the Bible says about being a father. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, paraphrasing, that any man that cannot provide, protect, cater for his family, it says that he has lost the faith. He has given up the faith and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Brothers, this is a very serious point and I want you to pay attention whether you are married or you are preparing for marriage ask yourself am i a father you don't become a father when you get married you get married because you are a father many men are not fathers the hallmark of fatherhood is responsibility the ability to provide and protect it says but if any provide not for his own So are you a father brothers ask yourself 
I want to marry. The question God is asking you is, are you a father? It's not enough to be a husband. You must be a father. You will have to provide the conducive atmosphere. Provide love. Provide food. Provide shelter. Provide security. Provide the enabling environment for your wife and your children to find expression. Provide spiritual guidance. Provide mentorship. You have to protect your family. Right? Protect them against the physical hazards. Protect them against the, the emotional intrusions of society. That's what it means to be Abba. Abba. So in our generation, when a man is married and does not have children, we say he's a husband, but not yet a father. The moment the wife gives birth, we say, finally, I'm now a father. Wrong. Societally correct, but scripturally wrong. Fatherhood is about provision and protection. No gentleman should get into marriage when you are not a father. You are not a father by your age. You are not a father just by longevity of time. You are not a father by the appearance of many children. Whether spiritual or physical. You are a father according to your ability to provide. Every lady asks the gentleman close to you, are you a father? Don't answer. I am matured. I'm not a small boy. Nobody's arguing. We know you are 35. Are you a father? That's what we want to know tonight. Are you a father? I was born 19. Uh, we are not arguing. Are you a father? You neglect fatherhood when you become irresponsible. All the brothers say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be a father indeed. Say it loud in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family. Say it again. I receive grace to provide for my family and to protect my family. And it starts with your relationship. Show me how you provide for her. And show me how you protect her. I'm not just talking of finances necessarily. Show me your attitude towards responsibility. I can discern your nonchalance about life. Nonchalance about people. How many gentlemen do not have this fatherhood consciousness? Let me tell you. When a guy begins to have a fatherhood consciousness, he will travel and go on a trip. Every time he's returning, he's thinking, there are people in my house or there are roommates that I have. What can I buy for them? Even if it's as little as cheese balls, that's fatherhood. A sense of responsibility. Self-centeredness is dying. You know that it's not about me alone. You are satisfied when people drink from your grace, drink from your finances. You are becoming a father. How many of us travel for, for five months, five weeks? You come back and the only thing is the same box you went with. Guys, how you doing? I don't miss you. Nakai, Nawao. And you gist everybody. And you see all of them hungry. Say, never chop. And you are just watching. You are not a father. You are a friend. When you call God Father, you are not just calling God Father because you are his son or his daughter you are calling god father because as your father he has made it a point of duty to provide for you and to protect you he provided salvation he secures that salvation today he has provided a platform for you to be a partaker of his divine nature he has provided a platform for you to enjoy the life the zoe life here on earth that's what makes him a father many men deceive themselves thinking because they have the ability to produce babies or they have produced babies they are fathers fatherhood is not just about reproduction fatherhood is about responsibility so brothers god is asking you tonight are you a father you can train yourself into fatherhood you can know that you are a father you are not a father when you marry you get married because you believe you are a father now 
when you understand this you will never go and carry any man's daughter to get married to her when you know that there is no means for you to eat you are not a father at that point the lady does not have to start asking you where are we going to eat food how is money going to come because if you are truly a father you would have made that factor you would have factored in as part of your marriage and relationship responsibilities that i am upper provider protector protector